Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to um, we're going to have a little bit of a recap and uh, and a rehouse at the same time, because as you regulars will know, we bred our Monosontrophus balfouri, the so so Socotra Island blue baboon. Oh bloody hell, mouthful! And uh, we kept back some babies. Now I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I kept back thirty. And they're in here. And as you can imagine, there's 30 of them in there. So uh, it's all looking a bit rough in there. So I decided it's about time we move them over. Now you'll know that um, generally speaking, all my slings and things like that, I like to keep them in small enclosures. And this is to enable them to find food without expelling too much energy tearing around all the time. So I keep them small. So hence 30 of them in here, because they're a communal, we're keeping them communally. Um, this also keeps them in close contact with one another and uh, should, fingers crossed, stop any cannibalism. Because although these guys are sort of known as a, a communal spider, they are still capable of cannibalism. So we're gonna put her in this, this 20 by 20 by 20 Komodo. A bit of this beastie life in there, um, beardy life, sorry. And we're also going to add some of our beastie substrate. Now, this substrate here I've actually allowed to dry out, so there's very, very little moisture content in that. And that is because the Balfouri do appreciate a dry. Um, climate but that's not to say that it needs to be bone dry now there's a little bit of confusion about this and I've sort of gone my own way and um, I may keep mine differently to how you guys have kept yours and uh, I don't think there's a particularly right or wrong way it's just what you prefer but I found with these guys that they do actually enjoy a certain amount of humidity. So around about 50, even up to 70% humidity, which may sound really high for a Balfouri, but we mustn't get confused again with the humidity and wetness. They don't like it wet. They like a dry substrate. So what I tend to do with mine is I keep them bone dry on their substrate, but I spray them very, very gently, maybe once a week. And this allows them, they will come out and drink from this, and it will also allow them to get that, that air humidity, which seems to be really important. Now, um, I've been keeping mine like that for some time now, and I've bred them, so I would say that that's actually seems to be a reasonable way of doing it. Um, each to their own, but it gives you something to think about of how, how I do mine. So what we're gonna do, we've got a simple thing here, and as you can see in there, we've got a bit of, Bit of rubbish and bits and pieces in there as well. We're going to put a simple piece of bark in the bottom, and then what I've got here, this is um, off an oak tree. This is just a, a branch that I've snapped off. So I think what we're doing is we're looking for making anchor points. So what we're going to do? I don't want that quite that long. So we're literally going to snap these off till we get it where we want it. There we go. Now by doing this, we, we're actually going to create different points within the enclosure for these guys to, to be able to attach their web to because they will make an absolutely awesome web castle out of this it will look absolutely incredible so and what we're going to do as well is i'm going to try and encourage them to web a little higher up because although these these are an old world terrestrial spider but in the wild they will web up around the bottoms of plants shrubs and things like that 
and that also encourages them to go up slightly. So very similar to things like an OBT. They'll, they'll actually go up inside the shrubbery to a certain height. They won't go very high, but they'll, they'll go up off the floor. So we're going to put this in here like this, and hopefully over time, they will web right to the top, and we'll see them gradually climb out of the enclosure. So that is pretty much it. That's all we're going to do there. Now we are going to put a water bowl in here. Now I, I do always put a water bowl in with my my Balfouri. Not 100% sure whether it's actually really necessary. I just like to provide it should they need it. You'll see in their sling pot in a moment, there is no water. And that's because generally with my slings, I, I don't put water bowls in there. I don't, I don't feel it's necessary and quite often or not, within the enclosure that they're in, they don't necessarily have the space in which to put a bowl in anyway. All right. I think that looks, that looks fine like that. Now then, let's see how, how these are gonna behave. If you come over and have a look at these, you can see inside that tub, it's an absolute diabolical mess. Filthy. Look at all the remains of the roaches and things like that. And it has got a certain aroma to it. So what we're going to do now is we are going to... We've got our little catch cup here. Now, I think I've got 30 in here, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to have to... Um, there's one. We're going to have to try and count them as we go. Make sure I've not got any caught up in the web. If anyone sees one, shout. Nothing there. What we're doing now is we're literally just trying to clear out some of the debris so that when we do start finding spiders it's going to be easier to catch them yeah, we've got movement right pretty sure this is where they're all going. oh my god look at that wow these have grown really really well Make sure I've got none on the bit of bark. Right then. Did you see that lot? Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Don't think there's any in there. Whoa, look at them big fat babies. Oh, this is really good. Look at them. They've come on really, really well. But hopefully now you can see with the size of these babies, they're all growing at a reasonably steady rate. They're very, very similar in size. Doesn't appear to be any particularly large or particularly small. They do appear be quite similar so then um, I think I wonder if we can just tip them in on there for there for the moment right then here we go want to pop over here what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't inch them out and count them as we go you see that 
-hmm. They're all going to try and hide, aren't they? One. Two. Three. Come on, where are you? Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, come on, I know you're in there, nine, come on, ten, let's get rid of a bit of this debris. How many was that camera lady? Ten. Here we go. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty-one, twenty-two. I think there might have been three there. Twenty-three. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Twenty-six, twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty-one. 32, 33, 34, 34. My God, Cramer lady, they bred. 34, well, I've got four more than I actually thought I had. And looking at that, that is really, really cool because um, it also shows that we've not actually, by all accounts, lost any. So that's really, really good. And they're all of a fabulous size. Now, it'd be interesting now for some of you guys that, that actually purchased some of these spiders from us. It'd be nice to actually compare sizes now and see how big yours are compared to how big these are. And as you see there, I think there was maybe one or two that were slightly smaller, but the majority of them are actually all the same sort of size, which is really, really nice. Now, as we were saying about the husbandry, we're going to keep these, we'll actually keep these dry, but it is quite important to just, I think, to give them that little bit of humidity. And um, you'll find your general room, temp the room humidity is possibly quite enough for them. I mean, these seem to do really, really well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let these grow up and they will literally web this up. We've got another one here, which has got two individuals in. And you can see the webbing on that. Absolutely fabulous. 
structure, if I just roll that round, you see what an absolutely amazing structure they, they create. Now there is only two Balfouri in here. Um, they're both uh, juvies. Um, can't actually see them. But they're roughly about an inch and a half, maybe two inches big. So they're not very, very big. But you can see there what an incredible thing they create. So you can imagine what 34 are going to do in here. It's going to be amazing. So then, well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's a nice little uh, recap and a little see of what's been going on. And I'm sure they'll be really pleased with their upgrade. They're going to look absolutely amazing now. And a bit of luck, we can get some footage of them feeding because they will all come out and share their food and, um, and re-enhance that sort of... Um, social type behavior that these these guys exhibit now we've moved roughly around about two and a half three weeks on from when they were rehoused and you can see the webbing is still fairly minimal an interesting point here as well is there was absolutely no action for the first week at all nothing we didn't see any we didn't see no webbing no nothing they stayed hidden away I always come and check them in the evenings, and they were never there. There, so um, yes, they're uh, they 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 stay hidden away, which which shows that they're quite insecure as babies. And as you'll see now, they're all over the place. And what we've done now is we, I always pre-kill the food for these little Balfouris, because I found that they're not particularly good hunters, and they don't really take on live food as such. Now bearing in mind if these were still within the egg sac with mum she would be killing food and bringing it down and sharing it with the babies but as she's absent we are in, in effect mum and uh, it's down to us to provide food so I give these pre-killed roaches and all I do is I just crush the heads on them and put them in there and you see like now they're all over them. They end up in a big huddle and they're all having a good old munch and this is what we're after now as they grow once they start getting a little bit bigger and they're looking sort of like half an inch size then i'll start feeding them live food so i'm just a little bit a little bit careful with the, with the live food at this stage as you can see they're webbing up nicely now and the, the older they get the better it will get very very active now crazy little spiderlings well, I hope you enjoyed that. And we will keep you updated as to how they pr progress. So, hi. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. See you soon.